Michigan and Alabama have both transitioned past uh, th- their head coaches with Nick Saban retiring. Obviously, you like that segue there. And uh, Jim Harbaugh going to the NFL. <laughs> I want to start with Alabama, though. You are not yeah. going to replace – nobody can replace Nick Saban and what he's done, right? And I kudos to Kalen DeBoer for taking on being the guy to follow the GOAT. When you look mm-hmm. at the hire, Timmy B, how would you grade the hire? And what would be your advice to Alabama fans mm-hmm. year one under a new coach? <laughs> well, I don't know that they never listen to me. Oh, okay. that, no, no. <laughs> and when I when I told when I told you guys earlier in the year that the end was near, and mm-hmm. you could tell because of the way Nick was responding to the local media about the depth chart, you know, he got really petty about some stuff. There were indications that Saban was not himself, okay? And, and uh, you know, I wasn't the only one that felt this way. Uh, our friend Paul Feinbaum, uh, yeah. on occasion, took him on early in the season. And, and he was right uh, because he knows him, and he said this is out of character for him. Why go down this road? Uh, but the reason for it was at, at certain times, even though publicly he never admonished uh, the direction college football was going in with the portal and – and NIL because it would have been foolhardy. Uh, it would have been uh, a, a bad choice because yeah. Dabo. he's always been the king. Yeah, he would be the, he's always the, been the king of adaptation. You know, he's, he's never resisted change. Uh, but this time it was apparent from time to time, there were subtle hints out there for those of us that have followed him and know him pretty well, that he was at wit's end with it. Um, but, but Bama fan is still in denial. I mean, they're absolutely still in denial. And Kalen DeBoer is going to be feeling the brunt of it, and in large measure because of that, that schedule that's in front of them that is not easy. You know, Alabama goes from being, as I used to always say, the pure playoff privilege to always catching a break to having a really difficult schedule next year. You check that baby out, um, there's three L's on it without much trouble for us to find, okay, for, for Alabama. And that's even if they hadn't lost all these guys to the portal shortly after Nick announced, okay? Um, so it's going to take a bit of time, but Kalen DeBoer is an A hire. Mm-hmm. I mean, an absolute A hire. Now, Lanning might have been an A-plus hire because of his connection to the, mm-hmm. the program and his connection to the SEC. But, you know, his situation at Oregon was just too strong. You know, the, and the buyout may be a little too great, even for Alabama. Kalen was going to cost you about eight to ten million less to get. Um, I thought I thought Greg Byrne did a remarkable job zeroing in on him. Uh, those of us that know DeBoer know him to be a classic success story. Uh, the likes that I think the only comparison I can make is um, uh, and, and and again a lot of fans don't he, he doesn't always resonate the same way as you know an elite coach would, but I think all of us agree. Lance Leipold is one hell of a football coach, right? Yeah. He's a hell of a football coach. And what has he done? He has, at every level, one. okay, Wisconsin Whitewater, Buffalo, now at Kansas, okay? Uh, and he's what What has he had with him? Consistency, okay? His – Kotal Nicky, his offensive coordinator, has been with him forever. And Andy Kotal Nicky is one of the best assistants out there. Ryan Grubb, one of the best assistants out there. He is a great offensive coordinator. Hell, Nick wanted to hire him, and he turned him down because of his loyalty to Kalen DeBoer. So I think he's a great hire, absolutely fantastic yeah. hire. And, and as far as the people hitting the portal, that's going to happen to just about everybody now. I don't care how good you are or what the circumstances or which coach happens to leave. Um, most of those great players are coming because they thought the difference in going to Alabama was Nick Saban. I mean, they really did. That's why they went there. That's why he was an automatic number one in recruiting every stinking year. So I, my advice to Bama fan would be <laughs> Nick Saban was not welcomed as a as a, an SEC coach down at LSU. They didn't know enough about him. Mm-hmm. My God, Jerry DiNardo beat him in the Independence Bowl. How good could he be? Well, he was pretty damn yeah. good. He changed, <laughs> yeah. he, changed, he, changed, he changed the fortunes of the program to take LSU – into what I still believe is the golden era of, of LSU football. Um, uh, Wayne Heisinga was just too good a guy to pick up, and that's where I'm going to make my little transition into Harbaugh, okay? Mm. Nick, Saban, Nick Saban was how old when he made that choice? Jim Harbaugh is how old when he's making this choice? You know, the, 
the, the, and, and Jim had already been there and tasted it. He had gone to the Super Bowl in New Orleans in 2012 against his brother. I was there. I, I, I saw it. And, you know, he, that, that taste is there. You can't get rid of it. Saban could not resist Wayne Huizenga being on the tarmac at the Baton Rouge airport for two days waiting on him to go to Miami. And so he had to take the, the plunge. It didn't work out. And uh, uh, history was forever changed. But privately, in a room without consequences, Nick Saban and his wife, Miss Terry, would tell you that <laughs> one of the biggest mistakes they ever made was leaving Baton Rouge for the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and uh, how history might have been changed had he stayed, you know, at LSU. Yeah. But, and he still know, went 500 why. in the league. Yeah. He still went 500. Yeah. I, I have no, no doubt Better he would have had Morris. success in the NFL. Hey, YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button or Blaine's going to turn into a dragon. And we all know what happened in King's Landing. <laughs>